Hello! Today I was just playing around with Vellum and I thought I'd show you a little setup I've been working on and you may find it useful. So this is going to be the overall effect where we're actually just, we've created a very basic object, completely in Houdini. You can replace this with any object you like. But I just needed a test object. It's like a little squid thing. So we're going to emit this squid, the same model, but we're just going to emit it several times, different orientations, different speeds, things like that. And it's going to hit this wall and then we're going to have it stick on the underside of the suckers. So they stick on the wall and then there'll be brake constraints. So that is sometimes they just fall away. They will also stick against each other as well. And then once we've finished with that, we're going to look at a way of taking the original geometry and point deforming it back onto its respective render geometry and simulation meshes. So we have um, a full on renderable object later on. Just before I get started, I will show you I'm using some shortcuts here. So I've got command B and that's basically that button so I can just maximize my screen so you guys can see that a little bit easier. And then I have the command options S function here as well, which just does this. And just basically, you may see these disappearing or things happening. And you may notice I'm not going up to the top here and doing it. So that's that's basically what I'm doing here. Right. So we started off with this little bit of geometry here. Very simple. And I'm going to eventually replace this and Im improve this system to emit multiple objects. But I just thought I'd show you because this is just some R&D for a little project I'm working on. So I essentially I've just got a line here and then I'm just resampling this line to kind of create a remap attribute. And the, the resample is basically going to provide the curve U and then I'm just going to remap the curve U, just stick that back in the middle. There are other ways of doing that. You could do this completely in here as well with that expressions if you really needed to. And I'm going to duplicate and then merge. So I just get this and then I'm going to do a VDV from particles. And because I've got a P scale, which came from the curve U, so I remapped curve U into P scale, I get this weird tapering thing. Nothing fancy. And then I created the head, VDB. I quickly combined that to get this monster. Then I just did a VDB smooth, like so. I got the bounds, scaled it down, and then got like a flat thing here for the suckers. Then I did another VDB, VDB smooth. And then I just converted that back to polygons. And then I just did a Houdini quad remesh. And I just mirrored this as well. So it's just, you could use any mesh. I just quickly wanted to um, make something really useful. And then I scaled it down because this is the scale I'm going to be using. So it doesn't even have UVs or anything. So it's just one of those projects where it's just a, a temp object. So we're going to stash that and then output this from the sub network. So it basically is very clean and it's literally just got normals and position. But normally we would have maybe some more detailed objects and things. And we're going to look at that later on. We're going to bring in later on, we're going to bring in a, in a different tutorial, we're going to bring in a USD object with multiple objects and we're going to have to work out how to kind of partition things or join things together for the simulation process, preserve all the attributes and stuff which isn't that difficult once you know what you're doing. But for now, we just need an object to throw at the wall. <laughs> so if I come back up and press U, there is the temp geo. So I'm just gonna do a quick mask here. So all I've done is basically, I'm using the attribute mask. Let's see if I can just create this here. So I'm just creating a mask and I'm using the attribute of just float and you can actually set this to a, a bounding box down the y-axis and it's just a very helpful little tool and then I'm going to remesh this so we've got our simulation mesh let me just hide the visualization 
here, like so. So we've got a very, very low res sim. Again, when you have more complicated geometry, this can get kind of quite involved where you kind of painting density maps, curvatures and triangulation based off curvatures. And you might even be um, projecting the sim mesh back onto the original geometry and things. But for now, we just need a sim mesh. Then we'll convert this into TET. So this is now going to have internal triangles. And then I'm going to create a group here called suckers. I just used the angle. I just used the normal angle just to kind of grab that. So you could have done that anywhere, really. So then I just created a connectivity node that is going to be remapped based off the frame. So that is basically the connectivity attribute here is going to be changing per frame. And you see that down there. And then just to confirm that, I'm just going to kind of create like a color ID. So every time we emit, we get a different class or a different, um, different geometry ID. So that's kind of what I've done here is I've basically just attached a geo ID and it'll be the same thing. So we'll be able to use that later on. So then I'm just going to group all of my simulation up. You can add attributes on here. Um, again, I don't think I'm really using these, but you can kind of add friction and dynamic friction. And then important here is you need a rest position on this guy. And now we can start to add in the tet um, constraints. So I'm doing a tetrahedral stretch, preserve volume, and your attributes may vary depending on the size and the density and sorry, the, of your triangulation. I, with vellum, I always feel like you just have to go in and tweak things every single time you're working on something. <laughs> and then I'm just going to pack this like so, and then just move this into position where I want it to emit to. So it's going to be emitting against the wall. So I will basically add in a random rotation. So it's just going to be doing this, ooh, flying around or just off of its axis. And then I will unpack this and I will get the vellum, uh, vellum geometry here and I will add a point velocity to get the velocities from here. So you will see we'll now have the velocity vectors present. Where, where are they? There we are. Look at them crazy. So they're the velocity vectors and we're actually going to let this compute the angular velocity as well. So that will cause these, uh, this simulation geometry to spin as it's emitted. So we have that and then we branch the vellum and the sim geometry out here like so and they'll go into here and here and then on this side we've just got the grid that it's going to collide to. So we have the, yeah, a grid basically. Um, and then we output the renderable geometry here. And then I actually remesh this. I add some velocity for some bizarre reason. Maybe I can't remember why I did that. Probably not essential. And then I add some friction again. And then I turn this into a vellum cloth and we extract the constraints and the geometry. So these nulls, if you can see here, this little brown signal moving out, that's because I've got this few selected nodes on. So if if I want to disable that, I can hide that, and then I don't know where this is going. I have to kind of dig around. But as soon as I made this, I do know where it's going. But you can open the scene and go show for all. So for all nodes, you can see all the connections there. It can be a bit messy, this. So I tend to just do show for selected. So I can quickly just see where they're going. So you have the two vellum objects coming in here. And you can do a, you know, geo underscore star here, or you can actually do, you don't need two separate objects. You can actually just put this string in here with a space and have one entry. But sometimes it's nice to, link them together and be able to deactivate certain things as well. So you've got the the constraints on this side as well. And it just makes it a little bit neater. 
we're using the vellum solder like so and these are now going to go ahead and start to emit per frame but before we do that we are using the vellum source and I'm pointing to those so if I pl click on this guy you'll see it pops up there so I can go back or I think you can actually hold or is it control and it will actually pull up the panel that it's it's connected to so on the Mac I actually used control so you can see that this is the the input for the source and I'm essentially just emitting every 10 frames until frame 250 so that's essentially going to fire these little squiddies out on on the on the vellum source section here and then the constraints I'm basically creating some constraints some um, glue constraints um, for the floor and some glue constraints for the suckers so that's going to basically allow glue constraints to be updated each frame and the floor constraints to be updated each frame so when this gets close within a certain distance it will grab this geometry with the glue constraints so let's see whether we can let's let's just put that in action so I'm simulating at the moment so it might be a little bit slow but essentially what should happen is we should be able to visualize this node we should be able to see this I think it's called stitch points so essentially what's happening is when they get within a certain radius they're going to like stick to the wall to the floor and then also if this guy and this guy or the squids come within close a proximity of each other they will stick to each other as well but it'll only be on the inside so that's based on the groups so that's what these groups are for here so the suckers will stick to the floor and then this will be suckers will stick to pretty much anything they find each other I guess and that's kind of updating per frame so you will get this let's just have a look you'll get this kind of result where they flying out like so so this is still simulating at the moment there is a weird one hanging up there I think that might actually just be the um, it just might be the viewport being a bit funky there yes it's gone um, So yeah, hopefully you get the idea. This is kind of what's happening. But if you look, there's still simulation geometry. It's not the render mesh. So we're just emitting one object several times. And there's a break threshold, very small break threshold on here. Nothing animated, just eventually they will slowly pull away from themselves. And you can see they're sticking to their neighbors as well. So this is gonna slow down soon because it's still simulating. There we go. Um, nothing to read. I'm just caching this back in the background right now. And you can see it's quite difficult to kind of read what's going off there. So while this is simulating, I'm going to convert the tets. So that should strip out any internal tetrahedral meshes inside of here, like so. And then I'm going to just get the surface, the actual surface triangles, which was established back up when we created the actual tet mesh somewhere up here, tet conform. I added a surface triangle, so it's sometimes nice to just use that. So it's time to point deform the simulation. I'm just going to add some normals 
on the geometry. And I'm just going to do an attribute cleanup because there'll be quite a lot of junk from vellum. So I'm basically going to be keeping, for now, the color, the normals, the velocity, the rest, and the geo ID, which is the, the color you can see here. So I'm going to create a primitive attribute called geo ID now. And I'm going to go in to this loop. It looks more complicated because I've added a few extra things. So I'm going to extract the rest position of the geometry for each iteration, should I say. So for each geo ID. And then I'm going to subdivide the rest position like so, because it's still the sim mesh. And I'm also going to subdivide the the simulation geometry. So this is just one iteration. Uh, so these two need to match. And then I'm going to point deform that based off of the render geometry, which is here. And this is the rest geometry. So hopefully this will work. But that'll point deform him. And then I'm going to transfer across the velocity from the sim mesh onto the onto the geometry along with the geo ID. I then chose to, these are not being used at the moment, they were to do with the wrinkle deformer. I chose to take this a little bit further now and take the original geometry and modify the original render geometry, subdivide it and place it into a wrinkle deformer. So what you'll end up with is some fine wrinkles. You can't see them at the moment, but when this thing is finished, hopefully we could show you see if I could get this to work. Then I'd smooth those out a little bit and, and I'd do that here. So then I would just kind of loop through everything and it would again bring everything back out. So now you've got these little doofers and you can see the wrinkle deformer kicking in here, giving some weird wrinkles. It's quite a nice little trick to get a little bit more detail, I guess, um, from these weird things. Um, what else? That's pretty much the basics. Now, there are some other things here that this is kind of like a useless exercise, really, because there's no look development or UVs on these things. But I just needed a test object to try to work out this this workflow here. And I thought I might as well just show this process. Maybe somebody was trying to figure this out. The next thing is I have just what was I doing here? I was working out the maximum value of the geo ID um, just to kind of map that into the color. I don't think I actually used this method in the end. So yeah, so I just colored them all slightly differently basically um, with this ramp. And then based on the, the, the color here and this color here, I used the sucker mask to do this color blend. Again, this is not something that really is. It's something you do in look dev, I think, not like at the back end of your effects project. But I just wanted to look at the results a little bit more. Um, and then I just put the ground in like so. Now, there are problems with this because if we try to bring this into Solaris later on, um, <laughs> you know, there will be a few issues maybe. You would have to kind of create a name for each one. And I have a setup which does that and I'll do a video um, demonstrating bringing in a USD asset, just one, um, and emitting this, and then bringing it back out into Solaris as a new piece of geometry with all of the um, names correctly done. So you could kind of have a new effects layer or something, or creature effects layer, I guess. But it's just a little bit of fun, just a quick project. And um, hopefully the next video will be a little bit more advanced. So this is kind of like, the basics. You imagine this could get more complicated, so you might end up in Solaris emitting from a grid multiple objects, and each one of these little squiddy things might have eyes or horns or weird things that you. And then you can imagine this will become a little bit more complicated, and then you'd have to kind of do a lot of partitioning off down here for the different designs, maybe, and the different components to each design. And then you'd have to kind of split out individual. Solaris names, paths or whatever, just so you could put that back into um, the USD structure. So hopefully um, that's been useful.
Thanks for listening. Thank you.